Hello, I'm glad to see you all and also the people that did that at home, seeing us with the streaming, in this case on the meeting called Other Voices, Other Series. And I'm glad to uh, present our opponents. Uh, uh, they come from Wales, Flanders and Galicia, and they are Ed Kaufman, a screenwriter and producer of Hinterland, and our TV series based on Aversley. Um, Elicio Rodriguez Montero, um, screenwriter of Osa Bordas Margaridas, a thriller in six chapters that is on Netflix. Um, Tim Banales, executive producer, director, and a screenwriter of Studio Terrera, a drama in eight chapters that comes from Belgium and was selected in Cancerius. First of all, I will demand you to present your own series, the original idea, and who is the main character, and also the, a little bit the plot. Um, Ed, if you want to start. Okay, um, we, we made uh, Hinterland um, between uh, 2013 and 2016. Um, we made 13 90 minute episodes. Uh, it was a detective show um, set in Aberystwyth in the far west of Wales. Um, and uh, it was about a man, uh, a man returning uh, to, uh, to a remote place uh, and in a sense um, getting to know the place, getting to know himself uh, and it was a, every, each episode was a different um, crime story uh, with him leading a small team from a small, um, smallish uh, police uh, operation in uh, in Aberystwyth. Mm -hmm. um, Aberystwyth was the far west. Uh, the 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 landscape was important also in the series. It was hugely important. The um, we 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 were very keen from a cultural point of view to um, make a drama that that would allow us to show our own country, and also make a drama that might travel internationally. Um, so the decision to make a crime show was both creative and pragmatic um, because we felt uh, Wales did not have a crime show to call its own. Um, and we wanted to have a show. Um, myself and the, the whole creative team, myself and Ed Thomas uh, were the sort of the creators on the show, but we worked with a huge group of collaborators. Um, and we all felt very passionately that we wanted to show our country to show the landscape, to show the people. Um, and it's very strange for me looking back at the series because um, even though it's only four years since we stopped filming, um, a lot of the locations in the series no longer exist. Some farms have closed, some, um, some uh, old, very, very old pubs have closed, um, but some buildings have disappeared. Uh, so it feels like we, we made um, in some way, we, we were recording a vanishing Wales, which is, well, very sad to be honest. Yeah. But it felt it yeah. felt it felt more important to us than just being a detective show. Yeah, yeah, like cultural heritage, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Elicio, what we can find on in a Osa Bordas Margaridas? Uh, I'm not sure if I can ask who is Rosa Vargas, but the, the landscape and the entourage is important too in this. Yes, uh, who is Rosa Vargas is, I think, uh, one of the main mysteries in the show, so yes. I can't answer <laughs> that. <laughs> in English, it was called Bitter Daisies, uh, and it's, uh, till today is a two seasons show, uh, six uh, episodes per season. Of 70 minutes is one and it, it begins with a small thing with a small mystery that grows greater uh, uh, in the series uh, it, it all began with uh, with the disappearance with the vanishing of a girl who nobody cares is uh, the girl is not from an important family it she has no family uh, but uh, one single police woman uh, decides uh, to to investigate uh, this this cold case, and uh, which is a, a simple detective case, a simple mystery. It be uh, it becomes uh, greater when 
when she finds uh, at uh, at some with the uh, twelve bodies of another woman, and uh, and the mystery goes deeper and greater with a uh, with a plot uh, that involves uh, a a woman traffic, uh, prostitution, drugs, uh, mafias. Uh, and all this kind of stuff uh, is from a very single mystery to a greater mystery who involves a lot of people and a lot of uh, people in the government uh, and this kind of, of stuff. Yeah, yeah uh, it's amazing that how that uh, increase and increase and increase and later on it's all the people mm -hmm. it's 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 involved no team in your case uh, what are the original idea of studio Terrara and why you have chosen an ambience of comedy a sitcom studio to talk about so many tragedies yeah well um we're we're a comedy uh, production uh, house so mm -hmm. uh, for us this was our first drama series um we're pretty known for, for shows like Benedorm Bastards, which is sold in, in U UK and US as uh, Betty White's Off The Rockers. So we did candid camera stuff. We did uh, one sitcom, which was over here, was quite popular, but didn't do much in the world. And our sketch shows were, uh, are selling really well around, around mm -hmm. the world. So we, were, we just were so in love with, with sketch shows and we also wanted to do a drama series. So we combined those two, uh, which is a very uh, tricky thing to do. So it's set in 1993 and we go behind the scenes of a popular sketch show that we made up and we called it Studio Tarara, which mm -hmm. is like um, a very popular kind of comedy. You know, uh, the comedy that is you don't want to see. <laughs> But that uh, a lot of uh, a lot of people want to see. Mm -hmm. um, so it's set behind the scenes of, of, of a sketch show called Studio Tarara, and the actors lose themselves in a spiral of um, alcohol and drugs and women. And it's um, so it combines those three things together. You see, you actually see the sketches. Uh, there's a drama component, and that's the, the, the addictions of the, of the actors and how they uh, uh, make a mess of their own lives. And then you have a crime component because yeah. somebody has died, but you don't know yet who. And so it is 20, 25 years actually before the Weinstein scandal broke loose. And it's way before hashtag me too was a thing. But it's in this uh, uh, misogynistic, is that a correct word, Ed? Yeah. yeah. All right. In this yeah. misogynistic <laughs> uh, uh, environment, um, they call in a big uh, uh, actor because one of the main actors, Ricky, uh, loses himself in a spiral of drugs. And it's actually on this wheel of fortune behind me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see it so yeah. it's the wheel of fortune that studio next to the sketch show where he takes uh, a, a lot of alcohol but also snoring on the wheel of fortune some cocaine so he <laughs> passes out and so the producer has to replace him by what i call the bill cosby of belgium <laughs> and so by doing that she brings in a sexual harasser into her own studio without her even knowing it so it has, um, yeah, it's, it, it has this um, social component, um, this hashtag me too vibe uh, in, in the series. Um, and then obviously somebody um, got killed or killed himself, which is not totally clear in the first episode. And after a while it will, but until the last episode, because it's a mini series, you'll uh, in the in the last episode you find out who uh, who uh, what kind of murder actually took place and who lost his or her life, um, and that's about it. Yeah, it's so it's it's a mini series of eight times 50, uh, 50 minutes. Yeah, and really, it's really interesting the 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 mixing of genres that that, that yeah. there is there, no? Because it's thriller, drama, and and also comedy, comedy in this on the same. Yeah, yeah, I like I like mixing up genres. Uh, my favorite movies uh, are like that. My favorite series are like that, and 
unfortunately, networks um, are uh, scared as hell when people are coming over with, uh, yeah, I mixed a few jars here <laughs> mm. and they all get scared um, because it's not clear uh, for the audience what it, what it is, but this turns out to be um, a, a good one, yeah. After the presentations, I would like to talk with an important aspect of the three series, the, the language. Yeah. Hinterland was, uh, was shot uh, in double version. Um, uh, Osa Margaridas has the original version in Galician, and Estudio Terrera was shot in Flemish. Uh, um, it, will, it will be interesting to know if that was an option, or you can choose the language, or uh, how is the, real, the, the linguistic reality in our countries, in your country, sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, um, for us, it's everybody works uh, in Dutch uh, and Flemish is, is kind of a Dutch um, uh, 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 dialect. Um, but it's very interesting because um, uh, we're also quite familiar with English and French. And uh, the series that we're working on right now, uh, we're testing out how it works uh, with a voiceover, uh, with an American voiceover. Um, and that's something that with uh, Netflix and, and so many other um, foreign language uh, series, uh, we used to have only British and American and now there's, and then you, uh, 10 years ago, the Danish came over and now it's all, everything is Spanish all of a sudden uh, uh, or Latino. I think it's, it's great to have so many different languages coming over and that um, we're, in our uh, region, we're very used to subtitles, mm -hmm. so we don't need the dubbing. Mm -hmm. And I always like to hear um, uh, different languages and our uh, territory, our viewers are, are quite uh, used to it. Um, but I have to admit that comedy is a problem. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't have an advantage here. Yeah, because it's difficult to, to translate, no, and to have the. Sure, and there's. I mean, you all, you all know how how funny you can get in your own language, how funny dialects get, and slang, and all that kind of stuff, and so you Thanks. lose a lot of that. You lose a lot of that in translation. Yeah, it's quite, it's quite, it's, it's quite interesting that uh, just he hearing you say that, because actually, in some ways, comedy is a great protector of culture. Because, because, that, because actually, and language, because you're right. I mean, you know, the Welsh language is, is not spoken by everybody in Wales. In some ways, it's a minority language, but it is our national language. Um, and when you, and when you, you know, there, there are people who, who are at their very best and perform at their best and are funniest and when they are speaking their own language. And, and it's, um, I, hadn't thought, I hadn't thought of it that way really but actually co comedy in some ways is, is, a, is a very good protector of very localized thinking mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the comedy is i think that is the genre the uh, that travels worst uh, it's difficult to export comedy except for the american for the u.s mm -hmm. uh, and maybe for the brits uh, who have a lot of power in distribution uh, to sport comedies is really really difficult mm -hmm. uh, uh, indeed uh, we have some very successful comedies here in galicia but uh, when you Nowhere take else. out it doesn't no. work no and i think the crime genre is the best genre to yeah. export uh, yeah. your product i think the yeah. history drama the crime the thriller is really easy to export yeah. You can see you can see thrillers from Norway, from Sweden, for Dan Danish thrillers, British thriller, French thriller, Spanish thriller, uh, that are really successful all aboard. I think the I think the crime show is a great uh, Trojan horse. I think you can I think you can. People will come to it because they know it's crime. It's such a familiar genre. And I think the trick then is that once the audience have come, you have to deliver something that they're not expecting, obviously. And I, and I think one of the hopefully many things we delivered on Hinterland was that we, we, showed, we showed a culture that is generally invisible um, on international screens. 
I mean, we, it was amazing for us. When we were setting the series up, we went to um, MIP in Cannes and we, we had commissioned a brochure taking photographs of the area where we were going to film. And we were showing it to international buyers. And everybody was saying, wow, where is this place? And we were sort of saying, well, it's, it's Wales. Um, <laughs> and they were going, oh, it looks amazing. And they were talking about it as if it was exotic and as if it was, and we kind of realized that actually it was exotic to them because, mm -hmm. because almost nothing was made in Wales that drama wise that actually showed the country. Um, so you, so you guys were the first ones. Well, no, I mean, that, you know, people have done it before. I mean, I, I, would, I wouldn't want to sit here and take, take credit for everything, but it was, it was a, we were so frustrated as program makers because we were trying, the dynamic in the UK has always been, you get on a train, you go to London, you ask for permission in London to tell your stories. And then often in London, people tell you, well, I'm not so sure, um, because they have, they, have, they have the responsibility for the whole of the UK. It's a very centralized system. Um, what was fantastic with Hinterland was that we, we conceived it in Wales. We worked with partners in Wales, um, both at S4C, the, the Welsh Language Channel, and the BBC in Wales. Um, and then we found a brilliant uh, international distributor in all three media who were very enthusiastic and very, um, about what we were doing, but also very sensitive to how strongly we felt about it culturally. Mm. And I think so in the many, end, the show's identity, I think, was wrapped up in, in how specific the culture was. How many territories has it been sold yet? Uh, it, was sold, it was sold to more than 100. Wow. Amazing. Congrats. Um, yeah, it was, it was great. Thank you. I mean, it was a, it was, what was strange about it was it, that we made it for quite a tight budget and we were so busy making it for four years that we never really stood back and thought about it was doing quite well. Um, and it was also kind of, it was a double, a slightly strange paradox that in the UK, it played on BBC Four, which was fantastic, but that is the foreign language slot on a Saturday night. So it played in the same <laughs> slot as, as The Killing from Denmark or from Spiral from France. Small audiences. Yeah, but a really appreciative audience. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in a, in a sense, because we weren't on BBC One and we weren't on BBC Two, we, we, were, we ended up being almost like foreign content in our own country, yeah. um, which again was a very odd place to be, but a very exciting place to be. I mean, we were very, very happy to be packaged alongside Spiral and alongside The Killing. It was, you know, happy sure. days. Sure. And, and the fact can... that, sorry. You can oh, go ahead, ask, go ask. No, no. And the fact that uh, shoot uh, in a in the double uh, version, the, to to shoot in in Welsh and to and to shoot in in English was an option. Was your own option? Was a was, was a that consensus was, with BBC? It was partly a, a part of the financing model that the um, the broadcasters in Wales um, have uh, quite tight budgets. Um, they, they, they produce a huge amount of great content, um, but on very challenging budgets. So it was important for us to be able to accept money from S4C, the Welsh language broadcaster, and mm -hmm. from the BBC. But it meant that we had to deliver the same program twice. And so we delivered it, the program in Welsh to S4C and to Eng in English to the BBC. We had one, one set of actors and they delivered every single scene twice. Once in English right. and once in Welsh. <laughs> oh wow! And what's not right. over? <laughs> it was shoot twice. Yeah. 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 It was crazy. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. And you can and from the start of the series. Yeah. Yeah. So that was yeah. the initial plan always. Yeah, and it was a. Um, yeah, it was. And now when I look at it, I think it was kind of insane. But what was interesting was we, we released it in 2013. And when we were making, when we were funding the first series, um, the commercial money was all attached to the English language version. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the uh, in a sense, the Welsh language version, the, the reason for it existing was more of a cultural reason. Um, but actually, the, as you were saying before, 
you know, I think global audiences' appetite now to engage with subtitles is much better. People want to hear languages that are not English. Um, I mean, we've made a series since Hinterland called Hidden, which is also sold internationally. Um, but that show only exists internationally um, in one bilingual version. It's a show that is in Welsh and English. And we can actually, and we can sell that internationally now. But I think 10 years ago, selling a Welsh show internationally would have been much harder. Yeah. Is there like a, a, a Welsh funding from the government or something? Um, well, the, the, the Welsh broadcaster receives, um, has an annual budget. And that's written, I think that's written into the sort of um, the legal framework of the UK that because we have a minority of indigenous language, we get a sum of money to Wales to support program making in Welsh. Yeah. Um, we also have a, we also have a, a Welsh government, um, a Welsh assembly who are very supportive of trying to keep the sector healthy and make sure that culturally we don't disappear. I mean, that's the, I mean, we're having conversations with other partners at the moment just about the importance of recognizing that Wales is a distinct part of the UK. We may be two miles, from, we may be two hours from London, but in some ways we're, we're thousands of miles from London. It's a, it's a different culture. We have our own language and it's really important to us that we find clever ways of keeping that going. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm um, talking about funds and um, financing. Um, how is your TV system? Do you have public televisions, private televisions, and how it works? And uh, where do you find your your budget? No? Um, Tim. Tim. Um, yeah, for us, it's um, we have like a, a really good. Um, program funded by the government um, mm -hmm. uh, for Flemish language uh, drama series. Um, it's funny because, again, the hardest genre to do is comedy. <laughs> you can ask any writer uh, and he will admit that the hardest thing to do is to write comedy and that's not funded. Um, so for some reason, they think it's too commercial or they don't want to get into arguments with, uh, I don't know what kind of producers, but I think that's, uh, that should change over here. But for drama series, it's, um, we can't complain compared to the small territory that we are. We get really good budgets. Um, uh, to, to make a, a comparison, we get better budgets than Holland. Um, yeah. uh, which is, you know, twice our territory. So we can't complain about that. Now, the thing that is really weird for us is that it's focused, all our, our fundings are focused on one season and one season only. Um, so that, that idea is um, outrageous these days because to sell something, uh, the first thing that they ask you abroad is, is there a second season? Is there an, a ninth season? Because then we can start uh, talking. And um, so they have to change that um, uh, in the very near future, because uh, that's our problem. Uh, Studio Tarara is a one-off season. Um, mm -hmm. If you write it otherwise, and you, uh, you make them feel like this could be a, two, a second and a third, they get suspicious and they won't fund it. So that's a really old kind of mechanism that grew into this uh, a part of, of, of the government uh, that should change because uh, it is totally unacceptable for us to keep on writing series that only have one season. Um, and, and the funds was the, TV, the, the governmental um, funds and, and also TV? And well, TV, that's the weird thing. TV, they want, they want uh, multiple seasons, obviously, because it, it all comes down yeah. to marketing and to uh, catch an audience. And um, it's, it's way much easier to go for a second or third season than the first one. Um, but um, so TV is, is pushing that and um, it's changing um, slowly. Um, but for Studio Tarara, that is quite of... Um, a turnoff, I guess. Um, it, it, we've been talking to so many uh, 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 interesting partners 
or interested partners uh, around the world. And that does, that's the first question. When is the second season due? And we have to tell them, well, there is no second season. This is a, this is a mini series. Okay. Um, and then the attention drops. Okay. Yeah. Quite weird, no? <laughs> Quite weird. <laughs> yeah. What? And in your case, Eligio, uh, where you can find the phones, how is the, the TV system in Spain? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, for the Galician language series, uh, we have a, a public television that uh, it, I think is the main uh, source of, of of money for for the TV series. But we have we have also have a public funds to to improve the budget, which uh, in beta, in the case of Bitter Days it was very important to get uh, uh, the the enough to get enough money. To make uh, the, the series look uh, good, really, uh, with good actors, good photography, good m music, good sound, uh, and we helped the the financiation, the budget with uh, with Netflix, of course, who was uh, uh, very helpful. But for the second season, uh, we have uh, the part from the from the public TV in Galicia, the Televisión de Galicia. We have the part of Netflix, but. but uh, like uh, like in Belgium, uh, we don't have uh, access to the public funds because we are a second season, mm -hmm. and uh, we can get the money from the TV, we can get the money from the Netflix, but we can't get the money from the public from uh, from the public funds. So it was uh, harder to do the the second season because. Uh, so it's the same thing, like in in, in yeah, France, right? Similar, similar, similar. but uh, it's also but, thinking. Yeah, but in Galicia we have the tradition, <laughs> the Galician producers, to work only with the with the money of the TV. Uh, the public funds uh, till some years ago never went in, into TV. The public funds went only in cinema. So it was new that uh, the public funds could go into into a TV series to make it better, to make it easier to export. Uh, that, that was good, but. We like this uh, this punch for the second season, so we replace it with hard work, with imagination, and uh, and we all try to 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 get the second season to look as good as the first season. Uh, although there was not so much money, but I think we we, we did a, a good work. Every 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 people say that to us that the second season looks greater than the first one. Who was uh, a great achievement because we get uh, less money. Mm -hmm. Ed, have you had the same problem or not? It's not your case. Well, I, I mean, I, one of the things I just thought of that I should have said earlier on about funding the first season of Hinterland was that we also received money from the European Media um, mm -hmm. Program, which was hugely helpful. Hugely helpful. We didn't we didn't receive any money, I think, on the second series, but but we did manage to get more media support on the third series. Um, was that a rematch? Uh, no, it was the, med the media, um, uh, me is it Media Pro or Media, uh, the European, the Europe-wide? I mean, for us, the, um, the, the biggest headline thought about media is, obviously this is a very specifically British problem, but because of the absolute disaster of Brexit, mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, we have a we have a, a right wing government trying to um, loosen the ties or even cut the ties with mainland Europe, uh, and it has a huge impact um, on on countries like Wales. I mean, I, I, I personally I think that the the effect of Brexit is going to make places like Wales more European because it it's actually it it's making us feel. I'm making a lot of people move towards the independence movement. It's making a lot of people um, feel very let down by a centralized government. And it's making a lot of people feel that there's a lot more sense being spoken in Europe than there is in the UK. Mm. Mm. Is there anyone in media pro-Brexit? <laughs> uh, if, 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 <laughs> if there are, they've never admitted it to me. No. I mean, yeah. I mean, but I have to say, I mean, it's not just, I mean, I, you know, I, I, 
I'm married to somebody who is not in the media and 99% of my social life is not with people who work in the media. And um, I think I know about four people who've admitted that they voted for Brexit. And um, yeah, we, we don't see so much of them anymore. No. <laughs> it's, just, it's a nightmare. I mean, it's cut the, the entire country is it, it's it's unleashed a problem that is. Um, I mean, I went to an international school, you know, a school, a school with people from 72 countries, and I find it utterly. I mean, and I'm heartbroken by what's going on in this country. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was I was in, in London on holiday two years ago with my family. And uh, several people in London apologize to us for the Brexit. We are not yeah. with the Brexit. <laughs> I know. Yeah. It is. I find myself, when I, when I go to Europe, I find, uh, mainland Europe, I find myself apologizing on a daily basis. I mean, I'm ashamed. Yeah. I'm ashamed of, of this country at the moment. Mm. Yeah. And can be that the TV series and films uh, of minorities uh, contribute to a real European Union, no? If if we know each other, no, and we know um, Belgian people um, um, to the, the series and Welsh people and Galician people, that could be a, a treasure uh, and 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 an union. Uh, that I think it. I think it would be brilliant. I think it would be brilliant if um, if the links with 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 those with these. With these other languages and these, in a sense, these smaller cultures within Europe, if the links were much stronger, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm sitting on I'm sitting on this call thinking, you know, how do you create a series, or how do you conceive of an anthology series or a project where you work with the guys on this call, you know, where where you kind of mm -hmm. go, how, how do you how do you get the Welsh money talking to the Gillifian money or the Flanders money or the mm -hmm. so that and then end up with something that feels creatively exciting and not not like it can't feel like a business deal it has to feel like a cultural explosion yeah, yeah. How, how you do that i don't know but i i do feel like i feel like evangelical at the moment about wanting to hold desperately onto all the links with europe because <laughs> of everything that's going on in the country Alicia, mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you think about that I think uh, for us in Galicia, uh, we have the, the same problem with the language like uh, like in Wales. Uh, it, not all the people in Galicia speak Galician language, uh, unfortunately, in a, especially in the, in the big cities, the seven big cities in Galicia, many people don't, doesn't speak, don't, sorry, don't speak uh, Galician language. In the in the small villages, in, uh, in the, I think uh, almost everybody speaks Galician. So, for Galicia, it's important that we we have a, a a Galician TV, a Galician cinema, a Galician movies in these languages. is is very is very important. I think that uh, the same problem uh, we are going to find this problem in 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 Great Britain with uh, with the world's language. I think in, in France it will happen with other another small languages. Uh, in, in Belgium, uh, and and you know, I, there are many countries in the union, in the European Union that, for example, the Czech Republic is a small country with its, its own language, like the Dutch is a, is is a small, it's a, it's a small country with a small with a language that is not English or French or German, who's that is uh, spoken by a lot of people. So, I think the. the to improve the the production in a small languages, it will be very helpful to get just the people to consume every kind of mm -hmm. of, of language in, in the TV. It's not just English and his and your own language so that is the people are used to do, no? Or, mm -hmm. or in Spain in Spain uh, we have a uh, the you we used to the the the, the movies and uh, sorry, sorry, the theaters and the and the TV stations used to uh, to dub the, the to dub all the movies and, and all the TV series, um, only the the English uh, and some friends maybe, but uh, but I think it will be very helpful that the people learn to yeah to watch the, that, the regional languages. Uh, is that changing in Spain? The dubbing is that 
is there is there a subtitle culture coming in no is very the subtitle yeah. culture is linked to author movies to yeah. Yeah. weird tv series uh, yeah. to strange and i think it's, it's a pity uh, really, and I think the European Union has a role to play there because I'm, I'm all for uh, a subtitling because uh, is, if I want to know whether that's a Spanish or a Danish uh, uh, series. I want to see, um, I, I think it's, I'm always looking forward to, to, to series yeah. who have like a weird English accent. Uh, uh, yeah. Scottish or, or Irish or whatever. <laughs> no, I, I love to see. Uh, I love to see uh, the uh, not only uh, French movies, Czech movies, Polish movies, or Russian movies with the original language, British movies, or English American movies yeah. with with the language. You can see that there is no such a thing like the yeah. English. They have a lot of accents uh, in England: the, the Scottish, the Welsh, the, the the accent from the South London. From the, yeah, I think there are many twenty accents in, in Great Britain, <laughs> and it, for me, it's really funny. To hear yeah. that with the subtitles and yeah, yeah, yeah. From, it's the other thing. I had, a, I used to have a German uh, student colleague, a friend, and I, I, I drove to to Germany, and all of a sudden I saw Bruce Willis in <laughs> in, in German, and that, that was really, really funny. <laughs> 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 sure. And which are the handicaps that uh, when you work in a minority language, in the sense uh, of minority um, language in Europe and eh? not in your country? Um, the casting, um, maybe it's more difficult. They are fewer actors or uh, the budget. Uh, what, are, what, what are the handicaps that can... I'm, I'm all... I'm all in, in Ed's camp when it comes to the, the diversity and the European languages. And I, I so much love everything uh, about that, but I've cursed the Flemish languages at the same time because <laughs> it's so hard for people uh, to get their attention if it's not in English. Um, you get stuff gets lost in the translation still a lot of people um, uh, 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 don't know how to speak or read Eng English enough or well enough. So they get, they get to see our show translated in English, spoken in Flemish. And there's two kinds of people. There's people who are like, wow, this is cool. And I, I need to know what the show is about. And then you have people working at a network who are like, I don't, I don't know what the hell this is. So uh, give me something in English and, uh, and, and they won't pay you as, as much attention as you might deserve, I guess. So, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, a double edged sword, I guess. It is. I mean, it, it, it's, I mean, it's quite interesting with us. I mean, we, we were thrilled with our cast on Hinterland. I mean, they were, they were great and they worked, um, as we say, they worked their socks off. For four years um, but I suppose when you start the process one of the things you feel is is that because we were making a show in Welsh and English obviously every single cast member has to be able to speak Welsh and English and that's that's quite a small pool of people mm -hmm. but on the other on the other hand having that constraint meant that we suddenly were giving opportunities to actors who maybe had been overlooked or, or to actors who hadn't been given the breaks that frankly their talent deserves. Um, so we ended up feeling like it was a great opportunity to showcase people that we thought were great. And the fact that this, the series then sold, I think in general, other people thought they were pretty great too. So it was, I think we made, we made an asset of a limitation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And their careers changed, I guess. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. some cases, I, I think so. Yeah, it was a it was a very empowering experience for all of the producers. I mean, myself, the other Ed, uh, Ed Thomas, and uh, Gethin. I think we all found the experience really just. I mean, it sounds almost trite, but it it felt culturally exciting. It really did. Mm -hmm. In your case, the lead here. I think that there is a relation uh, between the cast, uh, the casting, and the uh, and the budget, because in Galicia we have uh, some terrific actors, uh, really good actors, but 
when they get a success, a national success, international success, they became too expensive for for the for the bad deeds in, in Galician language. So, who we, we lose them, the actors like Luis Tosar or, mm -hmm. or Gutierrez is, is a for but an exception for a uh, for bitter days is we we have a uh, we have we have a uh, Nerea Barros. Uh, he he she is an, an actress who won the Goya Prize is 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 the best is the most important prize in in the Spanish uh, cinema. So uh, the year after uh, she she won the prize, she came to Galicia and uh, she, she won to 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 work in Galician language because uh, it's her language and uh, she made us an offer to work cheaper uh, because she wants to to work in, in Galician so it was it was very good for us to have a such a great actress in in our in our you know tv series but it's not it's not the rule it's, it's an exception yeah Great. Um, if we talk about budget, uh, how much cost a chapter of one of the of, of your series? Uh, a chapter of uh, Hinterland? Who, who was the what was the, the budget? Uh, <laughs> I'll, have to, I'll, have to, I'll have to do some maths quickly. Uh, you have to come back to me because I, it's such a long time ago. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a complicated, it's so complicated with Hinterland because the international version was 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. The S4C version was two times 48. Okay. Because it was a it was two commercial hours. And then the BBC version in Wales was an hour. And then yeah. the news. Mm -hmm. And then half an hour. And then the BBC four version was a was a 90 minute slot. So wow. I, I'm pounds. having a, I'm having an aneurysm. Trying different to slots. In it's pounds rare. or in, in <laughs> Welsh crowns? Sorry, say again. Was it in pounds or in Welsh crowns? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it, 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 inside in our heart. It was in Welsh crowns, but it was uh, no, it was uh, okay. It was, uh, <laughs> British pounds, yeah. <laughs> the, good, the the good thing of a streaming like Netflix or Amazon is mm -hmm. that. The, uh, the duration, the the length of the of the of the episodes doesn't matter. Uh, you can go with uh, 50 minutes, 45 minutes, 70 minutes. Oh, okay, it's brilliant. Everything yeah, is okay. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I your thought... budget, Eligio? Eh? Per chapter, your budget? Uh, the, or you the don't know. First season, I think it was around. Uh, I'm talking on. I'm not the producer. I'm the script. Yeah, writer. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard things. I heard things around the. I think the, the budget of a normal Galician TV series uh, from the the money from the from the TV. I think it's around uh, eighty five thousand uh, uh, euros uh, euros, but. Uh, we have Netflix and we have uh, the public funds, so the budget raised to around, uh, I think, one hundred and fifty thousand or two hundred thousand euros mm -hmm. in the first season. Mm -hmm. In the second season, uh, we 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 uh, we have around one hundred and thirty thousand euros mm -hmm. uh, for 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 episode. Yeah, yeah. And Tim, your case. I think we had something around uh, uh, 250 uh, uh, K per episode. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. which is a pretty good budget to do that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Good yeah. Uh, I would like to talk about audiences too. Um, how is the reaction of your own public? The, the public that in Wales, in Galicia, in, in Flanders? In Galicia, it happened something very uh, strange, not. I'm curious, mm -hmm. uh, the audience uh, in the main emission in the broadcast uh, was poor, uh, but uh, in internet uh, we have the uh, for each people who saw the TV series in the broadcasting in the TV, we have uh, two people 
who saw the series in internet in the streaming service of the, the Televisión de Galicia in the mm -hmm. in the local TV. So we we made the trip. Uh, uh, We made a triple uh, of, of of audience uh, from the the numbers we originally saw in, in the, for example, we we made a 10%, percent. It, it was really a 30%. Mm -hmm. because we we have to to add the people the people that uh, the people who saw the the series on internet who was a double, or uh, from the usual broadcasting, and then we we must add the Netflix audience who was uh, very good uh, in the wide world. Especially in, in, I don't know why, in, in some countries in, in America, like Argentina, and in, in, in Great Britain, we we were between the the ten uh, most watched uh, series uh, in, in non in non speaking English uh, language, in non English language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tim, your case, how is the well, reaction? Well, the reaction was. Uh, 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 really good actually um, the ratings were good but not um, like this was the best show that we've ever done uh, but uh, the reviews were amazing um, uh, comments uh, for both Twitter and Facebook and all that kind of stuff there was a really really good buzz going on and even today like uh, tomorrow I'm going to this uh, event for authors here in Belgium and I'm um, Um, uh, uh, we're nominated for best script. Uh, mm -hmm. We won uh, the Berlin Festival. Um, it was it was um, nominated in Cannes. It was nominated at the Rocky Awards next to a uh, fantastic series like uh, uh, Years and Years, mm -hmm. um, oh. uh, uh, the great HBO show, um, uh, uh, The Loudest Voice. Um, so standing among them was was. Uh, 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 a really, really good compliment for us. Um, the only thing that I'm still disappointed in is that it, it doesn't sell. Um, and that has to do with TV rights, uh, with uh, musical rights. I used to have, it's set in 1993 and I was such a big Nirvana and, and, and uh, 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 fan. So I, I, I used music that is just so expensive to clear those rights. Mm -hmm. um, I knew that at the time, but I just couldn't help myself. And um, uh, but but other than that, also I see that the mixed genres is just a thing that scares uh, broadcasters all around the world. Mm -hmm. And because we have we are have such a well we're well known here as producers that everything we, we present to the network they order. Um, and, and, but I don't have that um, aura in, in Europe with, with networks that don't know us. And so that's the only thing that I'm disappointed of. But other than that, I'm really great with how, how, how it worked out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, your case? Yeah, yeah we are. It, it, it was amazing, no? The, the, the... We, we had a, we had a, um, we had a, we had a great reaction uh, when it was shown on the, on the Welsh channel, as we'll see, the Welsh language channel. Um, it was a really great audience reaction um, that it was shown on BBC Wales. So it was shown in English to a Welsh audience, um, a great reaction. And then it was shown on BBC Four uh, to a UK audience in the Saturday night foreign language slot. Um, and that was great because we had, we held our own. We, 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 we were able to sit amongst yeah. those other European shows and feel like we belonged there. Um, Which was which was really exciting. Um, the thing that the thing that we didn't really notice was that it was being watched in other places, and it was only it was only starting to real. I mean, Ed Thomas, the the um, executive producer and, and the other creator, he he went to an event in the Netherlands and like a Q and A thing, and it was like packed out and lots of people had seen it, and he was doing a session afterwards and. And I think he was like, Jesus, this, you know, people, people, people are actually watching the show. <laughs> it's, yeah. easy, it's, easy to, it's easy to forget. And then we went, out to the, we went out to America for a week and we did a whole series of meetings with people who'd, who'd seen it and wanted to talk about various things. And, and that was really, really exciting. Um, getting, getting feedback from outside the UK meant, meant mm -hmm. a lot. 
Um, I mean, one of the interesting things culturally is, is that when you do a show in Welsh and English, you do get some criticism from Welsh speakers mm. because they feel like you are kind of maybe selling out a bit because you're also making it in English. Um, and that's, that's really frustrating because our reason for doing it in both languages was, that, was so that the production values would be higher for the mm. series and that the series could then travel um, and that they got a better project. But I think some, it's a bit, um, yeah, there's no, there's no pleasing some people. So it's, it's fine. Yeah. Here in Belgium, Hinterland did really good, I have to tell you. Yeah? Yeah, at the VRT, the public broadcaster. Oh, that's great. That's no. great. I mean, it, I mean in, in, a way, in a way, I mean, it's obviously when you do a standalone series, um, it's a very different dynamic. We, we, haven't, we haven't really done that. I mean, the, the, the obvious thing, I suppose, for us with Hinterland was that we were given the funds and permission to make a second series and then a third. So most of the money coming into that, well, at least half the money coming into that equation was commercial money. So I guess it was, it was working for the people writing the checks. Um, so that's obviously, that was a great feeling. And we kind of ended as, we sort of ended it on our terms as well, which was very nice. We brought the story to an end um, because we'd all, we'd been working away from home for four years and everybody needed a break. Um, mm -hmm. Although we often we often kind of we often talk to each other and say, "Oh, it'd be nice to do some more," um, but I, I don't know if that'll happen. It, it would be great, but it would. Um, we we'll have to wait and see. And you are examples of that 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 this kind of series can have a viability viability uh, on the future, no? Um, can pla um, um, platforms like HBO or Netflix can help uh, to the viability of this kind of series? Uh, uh, in your each one in in this own language yeah it's, i i th i think the sorry I, i just i think the um it's all about how you place these projects in the international market i mean we were we were terrified when we were filming the first series the, the distributors in london they issued a, a press release saying hinterland is the welsh killing mm -hmm. um and we were like don't say that don't say that because the killing's amazing and yeah, yeah. we're still making this thing and it might be shit. Um, yeah. uh, so, but they, they were like, yeah, but it's the same vibe and they were very confident in it. And actually, I think, I think that one press release really helped position the series and it helped international buyers feel confident that they maybe knew what they were going to get slightly. And um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tim, um, the mixing uh, genres is a difficulty, but uh, can platforms help? Yeah, I, I just, the, I totally hear what you, what Ed was just saying because you don't want, as a as a creator, you don't want to be put in a box. Um, but for an audience and and definitely for a network, um, they really want to do that, and and it helps them sell the product and. Uh, it feels safe for them, or some, some, somehow. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so yeah, uh, mixing the jars is just something that is um, uh, something that I like to do. It's it's the stuff that I really like watching, and um, and um, I, for me, everything starts with an original idea, and mm -hmm. um, I think that's my my. Uh, biggest value I, I want stuff to be original and sometimes it can be um, uh, hard for an audience or a network to uh, to come by yeah mm -hmm. but it's really interesting and eh? on this case the the, the mixing uh, yeah maybe yeah. It, I, I I have no maybe uh, it's difficult to send but absolutely and I, I, I have no regrets whatsoever absolutely mm -hmm. not um, mm -hmm. I think it's it's uh, it's the reason why um, uh, so many people um, uh, and so many journalists wrote about this series. Um, uh, so I, I don't regret this at all. But 
you know, a language like a Flemish language, uh, yeah. mixing the genres. Uh, uh, if you add everything up, <laughs> it was a challenge. It's a hard, no, it's a hard sell. Yeah, it was a challenge. And uh, talking about challenge, what are your next uh, projects? My next projects. Um, first of all, uh, we challenged our own government with the length and and. Um, um, Elicio was, was talking about that. Um, that's something that is changing right here because everything had to be 40 minutes or more to get uh, public funding. And I convinced them that that is just an old way of thinking, um, that, that that doesn't happen anymore. And um, so now we're working on a 30 minute um, uh, show about a left-wing girl who falls in love with a right wing guy. <laughs> so um, it's a tricky subject, uh, but it's, you know, if you're talking about Brexit or right now in the States or whatever, I mean, the hatred between both sides is just uh, getting out of control. And um, we wanna, we wanna um, talk about that, uh, but it's, it's wrapped up in a rom-com kind of uh, uh, love story. So it's very mm -hmm. challenging, um, but that's something that I'm working on right now. And um, I'm also looking out, uh, looking forward to our movie project, but yeah, so a lot of, a, a lot of stuff on our plate. And Elijah, your project? Uh, in TV, I'm, I'm now working in a TV series with, uh, with I think Germany and Chile uh, and Spain. It's, it's a TV series set in, in the Easter Island. Um, I was at Easter Island uh, before COVID, of course, and we are waiting to to have a window in, in this in, in this epidemic to shoot in, in the Easter Island, which, which it's going to be difficult, but it, it's going to be wonderful. I think it's, it's a very special place. Mm. Very good. Ed, Ed, your projects. We're, we're working on a, um, we're developing a third and final series of a show that we make here called Hidden. Um, we also make, we also deliver a Welsh version called Crith. Um, and then outside of that, we are, we have a couple of um, film projects that we're hoping will go very soon. But like everybody else, we're, we're watching the um, COVID situation. Um, mm -hmm. Wait, waiting to see if a gap opens up or a vaccine turns up. Um, keeping our fingers crossed like everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to finalize or to, uh, to finish, uh, in a context of globalization, why are so important uh, projects that reflect cultural diversity? Your last line. Your last sentences is about why uh, are so important projects that, refer that reflects cultural diversity on a globalized world. I think the, the plot uh, may be local uh, and, it, and it's good that, that, that the plot uh, it's local because it, it's, it's something that I talked before. It's exotic it's interesting for the people. If you see the Disney movies, um, many of them are set in France, in Arabia, in China. Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, for us, it's, it's a value to set a, a series in, in, in Wales, in, 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 a, in the Flemish uh, part of, uh, of Belgium or in Galicia, because it's our places uh, not very well known by, but, uh, by everybody in the world. And I, I I read some uh, reactions to our series in, in the social network. And it, it was interesting uh, to see that uh, a lot of people in, in the United States, in, in, uh, in Australia, maybe in, in China, uh, think that one of the things that uh, they liked more, they loved of the series, uh, it was that it, it was in, in a very different place in, in Galicia. It, it was for them very exotic. The language was very interesting for them. It, oh, it's like Portuguese. It's, it's, um, <laughs> I study Portuguese in the university. Oh, it's very interesting. It's similar between Spanish and Portuguese. They they enjoy a lot that uh, they, to consume something so exotic for them. And I think uh, and the main and the 
And the other important thing is that the themes, the, the story behind this plot is always universal. And in other cases, it's a plot around the, the situation of the woman and and, and they, they find oneself. Uh, and I think that in other movies, it will be the family, it will be uh, to recover the roots, uh, someone who, who returns to his to his village. We have, I think that uh, our strong is that is uh, to talk about the universal themes uh, in an in an exotic background. Uh, that is a plot. Tim. Well, yeah, I think um, if if you um, if you look at the world today, it's um, all these big uh, companies. Um, are turning, uh, well, let's stick to Europe, are turning Europe into one big um, city where ever you go, it looks the same almost. You have the same uh, Starbucks, you have the same uh, H&M store. And I think diversity is, is so important to um, have a, um, a broader perspective of the world that by series, um, series are needed because it, it shows you something that you can um, discover anymore as a tourist. Um, so that's why I think diversity in series are, are, are very much needed and should stay forever, yeah. And it. I, I, I'd agree with, with everything that's been said, I think. I think diversity in culture and diversity in the natural world is a no-brainer. It's uh, it's it's different ways of seeing. It's it's about that feeling of belonging, which is unique to your own experience, but sharing it with people, seeing other perspectives. Um, I just think culture defines who we are. I think if 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 you, if, if if the end game, if we don't if we don't stand up for ourselves locally, the end game is that we all end up kind of looking and sounding the same. Yeah. And our, our towns and cities end up looking and sounding the same to the extent that why would we visit anywhere? Because every, every high street is going to be the same. And then what's the end game? We just sit, we just sit online. It's, you know, it's, it's um, I mean, I feel passionate. I mean, our language in, in Wales is, is in a hundred years, it could be stronger or in a hundred years, it could be gone. Um, and I know, I know how I want it to play out. And I just feel like, you know, a very small part of trying to make sure that it's still here in a hundred years. And thank you all of you for contribute for your contribution to the cultural cultural diversity. And thank you also for this talking. And good luck for all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye.